Welcome to Basic Brewing Radio for Thursday, October 13th, 2011. I'm James Spencer. Here at Basic Brewing Radio, we're all about home brewing. Well, this week we head to Hattiesburg, Mississippi to visit the Keg and Barrel Brew Pub, where they hosted the second annual Outlaw Homebrew Competition. We'll talk to organizers, participants, and winners. If you're new to home brewing and would like to get into the hobby for the first time, check out our website, basicbrewing.com, where you can find archives of our audio and video podcasts and our DVDs to walk you through basic and more advanced brewing techniques. You can follow me on Twitter. My username is basicbrewing, all one word. Also, you can find me on Facebook at Facebook, uh, facebook.com slash basicbrewing.james. And we have a Basic Brewing Radio and Basic Brewing Video page on Facebook at facebook.com slash basicbrewing. Thanks again, everybody, clicking on the Amazon.com associate link on our basicbrewing.com site. Whenever you think of Amazon, think of us and click on our associate link first. It won't cost you any extra, and you'll be helping us to bring you this show, and we appreciate your support greatly. Don't forget, there is now an Amazon.co.uk link on there, too, immediately below the uh, American version. We also have associate links for Brew Your Own Magazine and the American Homebrewers Association on the site, too. You can find our iPhone and Android podcast apps on those respective stores, and we're on the BlackBerry podcast directory now, too. Uh, one addendum this week, or one uh, kind of change to our uh, collaborative experiment on uh, yeast, or not yeast, but the fermenter shape, uh, we decided uh, to push it back a little bit. Uh, the deadline was a, a bit tight. Uh, we got some feedback from some of you who said that uh, you didn't think you were going to be able to make it. So uh, instead of, I believe it was November 14th being the deadline, uh, we're going to push it back a couple of weeks to November 28th. That's the Monday after Thanksgiving. So that will give you some time to get your beard done. And maybe um, uh, Zana Connor is one who suggested if you want to do some uh, some taste tests uh, to test your the uh, the results of your experiment, maybe you can do that with some of your family at your house. So uh, we're encouraging you to use a couple of at least a couple of different uh, shaped fermenters, whether it be a plastic bucket and a, a glass carboy or a better bottle or whatever you want to do. Uh, just uh, split a batch of wort into identical uh, volumes and uh, ferment those uh, in separate containers and see what you come up with. Keep track of all the details of your brew, your gravities, uh, the fermentation times, the lag times, and then, of course, all your sensory uh, observations as well. And I will let you know when the form is up for you to post your results on our site. And we appreciate everybody who uh, is going to be participating. Be sure to check out the feed for Basic Brewing Video. You'll see a video episode that I shot down in Hattiesburg uh, where you'll go on a tour of the uh, brewing system down there at the Keg and Barrel, one of the smallest production volume brew pubs in the country. Uh, you may have a bigger volume capacity at your house, in fact. Uh, also, you'll see the goings-on at the Outlaw Homebrew Competition and Festival uh, where uh, not only were beers judged by judges, but members of the public were invited to uh, sample some wonderful home brews. So you'll get to see that as well. And there's something special uh, in the feed this week, the video feed this week. There's a musical extra uh, in connection with the uh, video podcast. Uh, Richard Johnson, or Johnston, is a blues musician from Memphis that was playing at the event. And uh, among the instruments that uh, Richard plays is a homemade guitar that consists of a cigar box, broomsticks, scraps of wood, and other things all put together. Uh, Richard Johnston really makes that thing sound good, and he plays drums with his feet while he's playing the guitar and singing. <laughs> uh, anyway, he's extremely talented. And uh, while I was shooting video there, I asked Richard to play a song that was in the public domain, so I could use that as background music in the podcast. And he was kind enough to do that. And, uh, you know, I got home and I looked at that video and I thought it was just a waste to use that performance just as background. Uh, so I have edited that song into a standalone clip. And you can find that on the iTunes uh, Basic Brewing Video feed uh, on basicbrewingvideo.com in the description of this episode uh, on our Facebook page. Uh, on our 
if you go to youtube.com slash basic brewing, you can find it there too. Uh, and if you own our app, you can just click on the link connected to the episode in that app. Just look for Richard Johnston's name on the screen there when you're watching uh, or, or about to watch uh, this week's uh, video episode. So anyway, and I appreciate Richard Johnston letting me share that clip. He's very talented. He worked his rear end off that day. Well, let's jump right into the meat of the matter, shall we? Uh, you've heard John Neal and Sam Sorrells on this podcast before. John is the owner of the Keg and Barrel in Hattiesburg, and Sam is the brewer. And a few weeks ago, John contacted me and invited me down to cover this event. I thought it was a great idea because I've been wanting to see Sam's brewing set up, and I wanted to give some publicity to the efforts to legalize home brewing down there in Mississippi. Uh, I had a lot of fun. And I said many times when I was down there that I wish I had a keg and barrel uh, or something exactly like it within walking distance of my house because it's a it's a really cool place. And uh, I talked to a lot of folks. Uh, so uh, speaking of a lot of folks, here's what you'll hear today. First, you'll hear Sam and John. Then you'll hear last year's competition winner, now professional brewer Will Brown, and after that, we'll have uh, Lucas Simmons, Brad Lovejoy, and Chris McNeese, who will uh, talk about a, a, a running challenge connected with beer that they're undertaking. And uh, they'll also talk about the upcoming competition that they'll be their homebrew club will be hosting, which will be sanctioned by the AHA. Uh, after that, uh, Butch Bailey will bring us up to speed with Raise Your Pints, the group that is uh, trying to reform the beer laws in Mississippi. And we'll talk to this year's winner, of a stack of awards, including the the whole darn thing, uh, Ben Green. Uh, we went from Will Brown to Ben Green. So I, I wonder if Colonel Mustard will be in the running next year. Uh, well, John Neal, welcome back to Basic Brewing Radio. Thank you for having us. Thank you for coming down to Hattiesburg, Mississippi. And Sam Sorrells, good to see you in person. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Well, here we are. Uh, we're about to, here in a few minutes, embark upon a uh, an endeavor an endeavor of uh, questionable legality. Is that what's going to happen? Um, I would say yes. We're on the cusp of, uh, I would say, breaking breaking the law. It's unfortunately illegal to homebrew in Mississippi. And um, a couple of years ago, um, we decided we thought it'd be a great idea, considering uh, the, the 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 issues that we would throw a, a great festival and. Uh, have a big homebrew festival and uh this is our second annual and um it looks like it's it's a beautiful day and uh looks like we're gonna have a hell of a turnout so it is called the outlaw homebrew competition and it is i guess literally that if you if you look at the law and you see that it's illegal to brew beer at home uh you know the people who are participating are i guess outlaws and and breaking the law and flaunting it uh, in the face of the authorities here in Hattiesburg, Mississippi, uh, why or do you do you get any sort of reluctance to get involved in the contest, or you know, is there any fear that the you know there's going to be a federal van, uh, a black federal van, driving up and uh, you know rounding everybody uh, up inside, or what? Yeah, if a bunch of guys with with uh, a jacket show up with three letters on their on their on, on those, <laughs> we're in trouble. But Theoretically, we're good. You know, I mean, again, we, we we we're trying to push push the limits, but uh, not too far. Um, I, my assumption is we would have had some phone calls before now, um, and of course, we probably would have not had the festival because I'm not an idiot. <laughs> um, <laughs> you're not a martyr to the. Co you're not going to throw yourself on the fire, uh. right? But uh, yeah, it's 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 with the homebrewers and the craft beer people, they absolutely love it. Um, uh, and there's some other people that kind of look at me like I'm I'm nuts, but uh, they will continue to look as uh, like you know look look at me like I'm nuts, and that's just kind of kind of how it is. <laughs> Last year we had uh, we had questions by the participants about the legality, but I haven't heard had the first question this this yeah, year. Sure. But uh, that being said, I, I do have loose pants on and my running shoes, <laughs> just in case. <laughs> I was wondering where the first part of that was going. I <laughs> well, the, the wonderful, the wonderful thing is that we have uh, 
several lawyer, uh, lawyers in attendance um, uh, that, that home brewed, and we, I believe we have an officer or two that I don't know if they're actually brewing, but uh, my GM took care of signing everybody up. But there are definitely some be some Hattiesburg police officers here, which is which is wonderful. I'd be surprised if we don't have a state representative show up at some uh, point. We, we actually will have a state representative show up. So, um, yeah, <laughs> we're as we're as legit as you can be breaking the law. I assume I don't whatever that means. <laughs> Is, is it a matter of just uh, pretending that it's legal until people just think it is? I think that's kind of yeah, that's kind of my theory. It's, you know, nobody's told us we can't do it, so we do it. And I've never seen the law. I mean, I, I don't know if it's legal or not. I mean, um, it actually is illegal. But <laughs> the, the irony is that you know you can you can you can make wine in, in Mississippi. It you know there's no it make, well, there's no the, rhyme or reason. When the Twenty First Amendment was was ratified, they they uh, as a typo they it was it said home wine and or beer and the and or beer was left off so it was not legal until the the uh Cranston act that Jimmy Carter signed and and then we just never made it legal after that in Mississippi you know federally it's legal but not in in Mississippi and that was like, what, 79 78 when mm-hmm. Carter yeah Carter yeah. mm-hmm so, so it just never got ratified here, and uh, but as far as I know, I mean, they, they you know, home winemaking is is uh, very widespread, but uh, the home beer, um, it's kind of, I guess, it's kind of hush hush. We don't have any local homebrew shops that sell supplies, so we we either have to order or go out of state for it. And we actually we do actually supply a lot of homebrewers with 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 grain. Um, Sam, you know, they'll call us and say, hey, I need, you know five pounds of this this that and the other and we always of course hmm. help help them help them with that yeah so you're you said earlier that you may be the only legal home brewing uh operation in the state because you're <laughs> you've got a you've got a basically a brutus 10 system right. uh well we'll talk about your system well i mean it's a brutus 10 it's it's based off the brutus 10 it's not as shiny and uh, pretty as the brutus 10 I, I i didn't do it on stainless steel but um I had built it for home, and then when when the brew pub uh, idea uh, came to us, we uh, we just moved it up here and started with kegels, and since have upgraded to the the thirty gallon megapots, and um, it's 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 served us well. It's been going what we're going on four years now. Are we? Yeah, it's four years. Four in years. Four years yeah. in December. Yeah. <laughs> when you're having fun and we we we, we celebrate we always uh we do a big brew day um a couple of you know a month out and we do uh the the, the december 5th we always have our big um the celebration of the ending of prohibition mm-hmm. and um and actually i think i think the first when we were on your podcast originally we talked about this but um we had, sam and i had set a date for hey we're gonna open you know december 5th of oh whatever it was whatever, oh, yeah. yeah oh eight and uh, of course the paperwork work took a hell mm-hmm. of a lot longer than I thought and Sam came to me and said uh, we can't legally do this and I was like well screw it we've told everybody we're doing it <laughs> so we did it and we actually well, the state we actually, told us that we were going to be legal at that at that time they said you know this is the date you're going to be legal. So we we made all the plans for it, and uh, and then something you know as as uh, legal paperwork always goes, is something was was it. took longer, and we sold so, for about a month and a half, and then I got a phone call from the ABC. Well, saying, <laughs> uh, you're clear. saying well, no, no, saying um, well, Mr. we Neal, literally is, sold everything that we had made up to that point in in one night, and then and then you know by the time we ginned up again enough enough beer. Uh, we were legal. We were yeah, legal I did, I by did then. Get the phone call, uh, uh, Mr. Hill. Are you uh, brewing beer? Yes, sir. Are you legal? I said, Yes, sir. We're working on the paperwork as we speak. <laughs> so uh, yeah, we shut that, shut her down for a month or so, and then um, they got their taxes back on it. We, That's right. I, I, I paid taxes on it. That's right. Well, they, it's it's kind of funny because uh, you know I'm watching this uh, Ken Burns documentary mm-hmm. on prohibition on uh, PBS now and uh you know it's kind of it's 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 almost like stepping back in time you know coming down here and and you guys are 
you know, like like the you know the government officials used to go to the speakeasies, you know, back in the prohibition days, and and it was kind of a wink and a, and a nod, you know, that uh, they knew it wasn't legal, but we'll just do it anyway, and and so it, it's kind of interesting that that it, you know you, I guess it's you in Alabama that uh, that the home brewing is still illegal. They they raised the cap. Last year, or was it last year? Yeah, well, uh, the, yeah it's been about two years. Yeah, time flies. Uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, so you guys still are are suffering under the five uh, percent yeah. cap, and you're working on that, and and you got the double whammy of the homebrew uh, uh, illegal uh, illegalization. Um, you can't exactly go around the law with the five percent like you're doing with the homebrew, though. Well, <laughs> <laughs> don't we, get uh, yourself in trouble, John. <laughs> we, 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 we play around with that also just, you know, slightly. You know. Well, they've told me I can brew anything I want to brew. Uh, I just can't sell it. So, uh, you know, it's, uh, it, it, you have to be prepared when the law does change. So, I mean, we, we, have, we have played around with it. But, uh, yeah, the, the, all of our beers, uh, I, don't, I don't find it hard to – to stay uh, under the cap, and a matter of fact, for brew pubs, uh, we're under an older law yet. Uh, we we're limited to four percent by weight, and mm-hmm. instead of five percent like everybody else. So, uh, and even even then, I I, I don't have a problem uh, staying le- legal because there's just so many brew styles, beer styles that w- with wheats and and pale ales uh that that fit in that cap so how many how many uh, beers have been entered uh this year we have, we've had a couple of late entries i believe at this point we have 39 brewers and call it 76 beers mm-hmm. so which and it, that eclipsed uh, last year and we kind of we, we really weren't sure if we were going to be able to do it again um or you know do that well I know, I know we'll have a lot more participants here last year we um i was very uh, concerned about outselling the beer and doing and not and selling too many tickets this year we have a tremendous amount uh, of beer so you know so in the grand scheme of things it's it, it's not one of the bigger homebrew competitions but considering that it is in a state where it's not legal i think that's doing pretty good yeah i mean I, yeah i'm gosh I, th- I mean i'll be shocked if there's not 400 people here and you know and of course people can't see the pub but they can obviously hopefully you'll do a little little uh little little video casting later um it's a small place um that's a lot of people st patrick's day now we'll have about a thousand people here but um that's our, big, that's our biggest day of the year and you know it's funny we, we didn't we didn't start advertising uh uh st patty's day as as our day it just people just started coming to our place without us saying we're a pub or we're doing something special for st patty's day we were for a few years there we were asking ourselves where are these people coming from because <laughs> some of some of them we've never seen before and uh, they show up on that day so then we've turned it into a big event and 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 um, you know uh, host more people well it's a it's a really cool establishment as i said many times last night probably i wish there was one of these within walking distance of my house because it you know it is it is it is an old house uh, would you say 1904 is when it was built and uh, 1905 and it, it was a residence up until 1995 hmm. and then uh it was purchased by um a lady that uh a lady that uh, uh turned it into a it was a florist gift shop ah. <laughs> for 10 years and then we moved in in 2005 so hmm. we're the third residence i suppose well, it's cool. It's a, it's good food and 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 good beers, or at least as good as you guys can get. And uh, <laughs> now you do well within the restrictions. I mean, there's a good selection. Um, but the, since you guys did the first Mississippi homebrew competition last year, there have been a couple more, right? Yeah, uh, Hobson and Haban- Habanos in Jackson. They did one. Uh, it, it was a little smaller than ours, but they 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 hosted it for Jackson. Uh, they've they've got another one planned. Uh, I think in a month from now in Jackson. So yeah, we kind of opened the door for other people to uh, to do uh, homebrew competitions. Uh, before that, 
uh, home brewers in the state were going to Memphis and Nashville and, and you know, uh, to, to compete. So it's nice having one in our backyard. And the more of these, uh, uh, I guess Barrett at the bar was saying that if you look at the website for, for their competition, it's pretty much the same rules and regulations as your competition. But I guess, you know. Actually, yeah, I fax them. <laughs> I fax them our rules and regulations. Oh, well, there's a reason, right? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but that's, a, you, you would think that the more, the more of those that happen, uh, the more the less unusual or the less mysterious that homebrewing is going to become. Yeah, well, theoretically, I mean, one of my concerns is that it gets so much publicity that somebody has a problem with it. Um, but, you know, that's we'll see. Interestingly enough, um, we have a craft beer week in Mississippi. Uh, our governor decreed it uh, the whole week, uh, 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 craft beer week. And it says in the decree about homebrewing, uh its contribution to craft beer and and I, I found it ironic that you know they made that point they put it in there but home brewing is still illegal you know, my assumption that the governor didn't realize that it was illegal i mean obviously because i don't <laughs> think he would have probably <laughs> made that statement i think craig uh, one of our oh, raise your pint guys yeah. actually uh, wrote the uh, decree and he and our governor <laughs> yeah, signed, it. signed it so but he was a supporter of razor pints so uh we appreciated appreciated him our and hated yeah. hated hate it didn't pass while he was in office <laughs> <laughs> no. now uh this this competition uh you know I've, I've helped judge in a couple of uh you know bjcp sanctioned competitions uh and this is structured differently i mean and usually you send three beers to a competition and then those are are used to judge in the in the various rounds, uh, but you guys have kind of a different setup. Yeah, I mean, it, look, it's it's all about building the culture, and and you know, if you have one beer or six beers, we don't care. Bring them, mm. let's taste them. Some of them are crap. Some of last year, some of them were fantastic. Some of them are crap. But you know, I mean, it's all about for us building the culture, building the camaraderie. Um, Sam actually. Um, you know, set up all the all the rules and regulations for uh, judging. Um, mm-hmm. We've got 15 judges um, from all over, all over, uh, all over South Mississippi. Um, uh, a couple from Louisiana, um, and we've got homebrewers from. I think we've got homebrewers from Florida, from Texas. So it's uh, you know, I, I really when the law changes. I mean, the, the the fact is, it's it's you know, it's hard to advertise for this event. It's really by word of mouth. Facebook, um, when it does change, because it will change, um, I mean, I, I see this becoming a very large function that we possibly, as large as, as the, our property is, you know, something we can't handle, and that would, be, that would be fantastic. But it's designed for as a public event, whereas uh, most competitions that you enter, the only people who taste the beers are the judges themselves, but you guys have... have I believe the official rules, if I remember correctly, say that you enter 12 bottles of beer, right? And that way they get to be shared out with the rest of the uh, attendees to the event? They have to bring that much beer uh, to share with the uh, attendees of of the event. And uh, we judge the same day of the event rather than uh, beforehand, uh, which is uh, very different uh, than other contests. But... Uh, the difference this year from last year is that we're giving them feedback loosely based on the uh, GABF, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, BJCP rules and uh, loosely based on that. I, I, wanted to, I wanted to change the scoring a little bit so not to imply that we were BJCP sanctioned. And um, so we, we go through, uh, there's six categories of beers and uh, the winners of those categories, the top three beers will be judged overall by uh, three different judges. And um, so we can have category winners and, and overall winners by the end of the day. So it, it's not sanctioned by the, by the beer judge certification program, BJCP. Uh, is that because of the status, the legal status of the of home brewing? No, we, you know, I think the first year we did it, we didn't, we had no idea the the number of people we would have. Uh, if we'd have known, we probably would have 
sought out, um, you know, that status. But then again, being a, a state with no home brewing laws, uh, we don't uh, we don't have any that I know of BJCP judges. Mm. So uh, I, I'm sure we have some in the state. I just don't know any of them. I, I've studied the coursework. I you know I, I I'd love to take the test, but you normally have to go to a contest to take the test uh, where there are judges that that are certified to give the test. So. Um, I think that's probably in our future. Uh, try to get try to get sanctioned, or at least one event for the state that's sanctioned, and that uh, that that we can start certifying judges. Yeah. So even if the BJCP blessed the uh, or you know the American Home Brewers Association blessed the event, uh, you would have to import the judges to. <laughs> right. And I'm sure. And I'm sure that there are probably. Uh, Certified and recognized judges uh, out there in Mississippi listening right now, saying, "I'd come, I'd come," but uh, or you know the neighboring states. Uh, but uh, you guys are on the. I mean, one one thing to think about is you guys are on the ground floor. I mean, you're just getting started. Well, exactly. I mean, you 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 just like anything. I mean, you know, seven years ago when we started this place, it's not the same place, and this this will not be the same uh, function in five years. I mean, I, I really want I want it to always be a festival. Um, and then you know if we could you know be certified that would be just a just a just a plus i know i know of one judge on the he lives on the coast it's funny you know the guys come through the the pub and they they'll say oh yeah i'm a bjcp i didn't know we had any in the state so we do have one on the coast and i and i would only venture a guess that uh graham cox uh he who he won national for a logger uh he he lived in meridian but he's since moved I, I I would imagine that he was uh, he was certified as well, uh, made a you know, big splash on the national scene. A home brewer in a state that doesn't allow home brewing. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, um, any any predictions? Any last words? Any uh, you know where 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 are we going to be next year or two years from now or you know what what are your what's the forecast? Um, <clears throat> I think we'll in two year well, in a year two years we'll be up to. You know, eighty, a hundred home brewers. Um, hopefully, get to five, six, seven, eight hundred attendees. And then, and for me, the the what I take out of all this is, you know, the home brewers that attend next year are most likely not home brewing now. And then for and for me and for Sam and for both of us, that's what's really important to me is just creating, being the the craft beer place and 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 and. And, and kind of setting the standard and and and, and developing developing the culture and being a state with the probably the lowest uh, if not the lowest so one of the lowest uh, per capita uh, you know uh, uh, breweries per capita uh, I, I'd like to see you know it, it's a pie in the sky dream there but uh, we we've we've seen one home brewer go professional uh, from from the from last year. Uh, I, I would imagine uh, we'll see more. Uh, Mississippi has nowhere to go but up. So uh, in the in craft beer, so uh, you know I hope I hope to see that, uh, and and that'll certainly uh, improve our you know, beer choices in Mississippi. Awesome. <clears throat> well, thanks guys, and uh, thanks for having me down, inviting me down, and I uh, uh, can't wait to to see the event, hear the event, record the event. So, <laughs> and good luck going on toward the future. Well, again, thank you so much for coming so far. <laughs> so far as in, so far it's so good or so far distance? <laughs> A little of both, both. probably. Yes, yes. Well, Will Brown, welcome to Basic Brewing Radio, and, and uh, congratulations on uh, last year's victory. You're, I guess you're the, the first official, uh, you know, uh, award-winning home brewer in, in Mississippi, huh? That's correct. What did you brew? I brewed an IPA. It was a base with two row. It had a little bit of 60 love thrown in there, and I hopped it with six different type of hops, uh, Amarillo, Cascade, Centennial, Columbus, Simcoe, and I can't even remember the sixth one. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So how long have you been been brewing? I've been brewing for about, about three and a half years now, I guess. 
Uh, I got started uh, with a good friend when I was in Hattiesburg. Uh, he worked with a guy that was a home brewer himself, and he came and kind of taught us how to brew, and our first beer was an Imperial Stout, and it tasted really, really good. So I was pretty motivated from the start to keep at it. And then I kind of got obsessed with the hobby, so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> so obsessed that uh, now it's worked into uh, a career, right? That's correct. What are you doing now? Uh, right now I'm brewing at Lazy Magnolia. I'm one of the uh, other three brewers there. So now I get to take my hobby and do this every single day. <laughs> so it's not bad at all. So uh, tell me about Lazy Magnolia for those who uh, aren't familiar. Lazy Magnolia is Mississippi's only production brewery. Um, Our flagship beer is Southern Pecan and is an award-winning beer and is a very tasty brown ale. And we have four other beers that are year-round and we are starting back doing seasonals now, which we have our seasonal this year uh, fermenting away, so it should be in Growler soon. So... What uh, what contribution have you been able to to uh, have at the at the brewery since you've been there? Uh, basically, I uh, got there in the uh, first couple months. It's it's been a nice learning experience. Uh, as far as contributions go, uh, basically brewing the beer, uh, small tweaks here and there, um, but we do try to keep them pretty consistent and tasting the same because that's what the customers expect. Is it, I guess that's a departure from. Uh, did, are, you, are you a home brewer who likes to tweak and likes to play with the recipes and do something different every time? Yes, I am. But the cool thing about uh, working there is that we constantly do firkins that we take to events. And we get to get real creative with the firkins. So that's a very nice creative outlet that uh, they give us. Uh, for example, I've done firkins with everything from a weed ale with lavender and chamomile in it to uh, you know firkins with bourbon-soaked oak chips in them. So it uh, allows a lot of uh, freedom and kind of lets my home brewer come out of me. So, so you won't be completely frustrated by staying within the within the borders, within the lines there. Yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> uh, and who knows what may come out of the small batches. You may come out with another year-round uh, beer that, that will be popular. Um, so what what does this event mean to you, or what did last year's event mean to you as as a home brewer did it kind of uh legitimize your your hobby or or did it did it mean you know or am i just making too much about it uh i don't know i always felt it was legitimate even though it's technically illegal in the state but um no i think uh last year's uh homebrew competition was great i think it's exactly what the state needed uh we need more events to bring home brewers together and to kind of get the word out there. And we need more people uh, finding out about this. And uh, I remember from last year's event, there was actually a couple that have never homebrewed before, and they just wanted to come check it out. And now they homebrew. So we actually have converted people into home brewers. So now we have more people doing this great illegal activity in Mississippi. <laughs> You're corrupting all these fine, upstanding folks. Right, right, right. <laughs> that's that's what we love to do. We love to corrupt people. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it, it's it's. Uh, I mean, were you were you intimidated at all? You know, knowing. That, I mean, they call uh, it the outlaw homebrew competition. I mean, were you, you know, were you a little nervous at all coming out and you know did you think that it, the place was going to be raided or that you would get in trouble or no I, I didn't feel that way at all I, I mean I, I feel like uh, at least here in Hattiesburg and I know in, in Jackson too uh, they've had a, a homebrew competition recently in uh, Madison Mississippi for example and uh, places like that I don't I don't think that uh, it's really viewed as that bad of a thing I don't I don't think that uh I don't think, like, the cops are going to come in and bust us or whatever. I never had that concern before. Well, it, it, it can do nothing but uh, it be, but good for the image of homebrewing to have, uh, you know, an event like this where it's all out in the open and, you know, nobody's sneaking around, uh, you know, in the basement or trying to hide things. Uh, uh, so uh, it, I guess this year you're a judge, right? That's correct. So you're going to judge the final round this year? Yes, I'll be judging uh, the overall winner along with a couple other people this year. Well, that's going to be exciting. I mean, going from 
it's been quite quite a year this past year. Yeah, yeah, it has. It's uh, it's it's been nice. Uh, kind of feels like you're on a kind of a path upwards, so to speak. Well, excellent. Well, congratulations on uh, on the way things are going. I hope, I hope they keep going up. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> and now, so that. now we got the police. See, the police are coming already. Yeah, Luke was right. We're all going to get arrested. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? Oh my gosh. Okay. Okay. Yeah, si- sirens at the uh, at the Outlaw Homebrew uh, Festival is uh, not not the best sign. Uh, you guys introduce yourselves. Lucas Simmons, Brad Lovejoy, Chris McNeese. Now, what are you guys are combining running and beer? Is that the deal? Yes, that's it. Uh, we are running from uh, Emerald Coast Beer Festival uh, 2011 to 2012. Our rules so far are uh, uh, one mile per day minimum, one beer per day minimum, with a uh, thousand miles between uh, festivals. Wow! So that so uh, so you have to you, you have to run every day. And you have to accumulate a thousand miles at the end of the of the year. Is that is that the deal? That's the case so far. Uh, we started with a small group, and and it's sort of uh, been infectious and spread, and the group's getting uh, getting larger and larger by the day. Now I, I'm with you on the on the beer part. Uh, <laughs> what what uh, what inspired all this? Um, basically, uh, Tim from Draft Magazine. He did a beer beer runner challenge from his 29th birthday to his 30th birthday and just just the the coolness of that whole idea you know we decided we want to do something similar and emerald coast was around the corner so we decided that would be a great uh time to start and stop the challenge and then that's where the name coast to coast came from so is it a it is is it a a matter of a of burning off the calories or burning off the carbs from the beer or uh I, no, I mean, we all do a lot of running. We're always looking to challenge ourselves a little bit more, and we all love to drink beer, so it just kind of made sense to, you know, start it up. And these guys told me about it, and I hey, why not? Let's go for it. <laughs> so uh, is it, I mean, what's the biggest challenge of that? I mean, you guys, luckily, living in Mississippi, it's, it's you know, warmish year-round, uh, so or warmer than than other places so that that helps you guys have uh, more good weather than uh, than other places uh biggest challenge um sometimes is getting the beer in every day <laughs> really <laughs> yeah because uh you know, running's pretty easy and the you know the minimum but you know we a lot of days we'll run 10 miles a day instead of just the one and um uh, but sometimes you know like I, I kind of been down past day or two being a little bit sick so having to get out there and run sick kind of wasn't what I wanted to do, but uh, it it varies. Sometimes it's don't don't feel like a beer. Sometimes I don't feel like running. So, a little <laughs> of both. <laughs> Again, the beer part I would have no problem with. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you guys have also um, you're having an, uh, another homebrew competition coming up, right? Right. We're gonna have the we're hosting the state's first actual AHA BJCP sanctioned competition in the state. Uh, these competitions are these are great, and I, I love them, and I go to all of them that they have. But uh, ours will have the distinction of being actually sanctioned, and we are bringing in you know certified BJCP judges to judge the event. So it's kind of a you know kind of a milestone for the state. But it is definitely it's not at all to take anything away from these guys because uh, it's building on what they've done. I wouldn't, I you know we wouldn't have been able to do it without the momentum that they've started. So. Uh, and you're going to start off small, is that right? We are. We're uh, we're doing limiting it to category ten American ale and the three subcategories under that one, and also category thirteen, which is stout. And I believe there's five subcategories. So any of those, and uh, we expect probably around forty entries. It's it's just Mississippi homebrewers uh, this year, so it's 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 reaching out. It's bringing together a lot of brewers who don't we don't know each other necessarily. So we're, we're it's kind of helping us find and meet and have an opportunity to kind of build some bridges and you know so we can be more more mobilized to work you know on, on things that need to be done here in mississippi and how important is it that you guys get together i mean it seems like to me that that uh, anything that you can do to, to raise the awareness helps right absolutely so far we've had our homebrew uh club which is the homebrew association of middle mississippi and uh with these festivals we've gotten together with Lucky Town Brewery, and and that's been tremendous to get 
you know, two local organizations together, we've been able to, you know, just use that to propel our momentum uh, forward to get the interest generated, both in, in what we're doing with the with the running thing and the homebrew competitions and everything. So it's been, you know, just, just a, a tremendous help to get everyone together. And, and Lucky Town Brewery is a, is a new entity? Yeah, yes, sir. Uh, we actually won this competition last year in the overall high gravity and decided to go forward from there and go towards being pro. So we're in the, the midst of clearing the red tape so we can be sold legally in the state. Um, which is it's a big thing for us but it's also a big thing for to keep competitions like this going on to keep awareness of craft beer get more people loving it get more people home brewing get more people you know drinking good beer and so you know we love supporting this we support hbam and everything they do and so it's a good partnership for us awesome amen brother <laughs> so where can they uh, do, is it is it being publicized how how people can can learn about the the competition yeah, the uh, the entry form and the you know details about the competition are at hbam.org, hbamm.org, and uh, that we have a we, we tweet it. We have a Facebook event page. They can so they can follow us on Twitter at at hbam, or they can go to the uh, Facebook page to get more details. But like I said, it's you know open to anybody in Mississippi. You know, not pro brewers, but uh, any because. Uh, um, one of the guys here asked if he could enter. So I'm, like, I'm, I'm not sure that may not be fair. But, uh, open to any any other amateur guys, you know, in Mississippi. So we'd love them to come out. We're going to have a great party that day for the brewers while the judges are doing the judging. So going to have barbecue. A lot of everybody's bringing beer. It's going to be a great time. So it'll be a good festival. So awesome. Well, good luck with it. <clears throat> Thank, you. Thank you. Well, Butch Bailey uh, from Raise Your Pints. Welcome back to Basic Brewing Radio. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. Now, how are things going? I mean, last time we talked, uh, bring us up to speed. Okay, I think we talked in the winter last year during the Mississippi Legislative Session, and that session was really difficult for us. It was the last session before an election year. So, of course, we knew that going in, uh, but you still have to be in the fight. You know, you got to get out there and make your pitch. This year, uh, we've been working ever since then. All spring, all summer, we'll be working it all through the fall while the legislators are at home in their district. That's, that's when you really make progress. And we have been making a tremendous amount of progress. Um, things look really good for us. We feel like we're exactly where we want to be. We're right on track. Not making predictions because politics are, you know, it's politics. But um, I, I think at this point it's looking good unless something bad happens to throw us off. For both of our, our issues, which will be raising the permissible alcohol content in beer from 5% by weight to 8% by weight. So basically by volume we'll go from 6.2 to about 10.1 and then home brewing and what we're going to aim for is making the home brewing law actually better than the wine making law in mississippi currently you can make wine at home in mississippi up to 200 gallons per adult up to 400 gallons per household but you basically can't remove it from that household you got to brew it and consume it right they can't take it anywhere now we could do the same thing with beer but then that wouldn't allow for homebrew competitions technically you couldn't take it to a friend's house so what we're going to try to do is word that so that it would enable homebrew competitions and things like that. So uh, they ra- they raised the cap in Alabama last year, right? That's right. Is that making any impact on you guys? Yeah, actually it is. It, it's, it helps. Um, it's, it's not everything we need, but it, it does help when you can say, because Mississippi and Alabama are very similar in a lot of ways. And when we can go to the legislature and say, you know, every adjoining state has already done this, has a much higher cap or no cap, um, they have, they, they do not have higher incidence of DUI per capita or drunk driving. I mean, a team drive, team drinking and things like that. So if you say Mississippians can't handle it, my response is you're basically saying Mississippians aren't as responsible as Alabamians or aren't as mature as people in Tennessee. And I don't think that's going to fly. I mean, other states have already done it and there's been no negative impacts. Basically just increased revenue without raising taxes. So if they can do it, I feel like Mississippi can too. <laughs> you could throw Arkansas in there too, you know. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> if we can handle it. Uh, <laughs> so uh, are you what's the next step? I mean, are you still asking people to contact their legislators and all that yeah, absolutely yeah i mean that, that's what matters there, there's an old saying in mississippi we have a part-time legislature that meets from january to april and technically they're not working they're supposed to be the way it works they're supposed to be at home being regular people the rest of the year but the old saying is bills get passed in the summer in mississippi that's when it matters so yes i mean if you if you live in mississippi if you own a business in mississippi if you work there contact your local representative and senator uh, you can find out how to reach them on raiseyourpints.com 
and uh, just be respectful and say, look, this is an issue that's important to me. This is why we should pass it. Uh, but right now what we're doing is basically that. And we have professional lobbyists working out of Jackson. And um, that's what it's about. It's, it's a lot of, you know, taking them out to dinner. It's a lot of buying cocktails. It's, I mean, it's, the, it's old-fashioned campaigning, basically. And uh, that's what we'll be doing in, now through the end of the year. And then when the session starts, uh, it's really more for show. And the, you still have you still a lot of work to do, but, we, you know, we've got to do it now, too. Well, good luck. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Benjamin Green. Benjamin Green. And what? Uh, A.K.A. Ben Green. Ben Green, and, and what uh, what club are you with, or are you, are you with a club? Not really, just uh, a loyal here at Keg and Barrel. Come up here, you know, do the beer club up here, and just started home brewing a couple years ago. Really enjoy it. So, and now, now go through all the things that, that stack there that you got, ending with that top one there. Okay. Well, I got um, first place in the wheat category. It was a German heffy, and I uh, added Valencia, sweet oranges, a little bit of raspberry to it. Turned out really great. Uh, a lot of people responded really well to it. I was really surprised about that one, actually. I was I was pretty nervous about that one. <laughs> um, and then uh, the Pale Ale. Got first place in the Pale Ale. It's for my, uh, it's actually an extra Pale Ale. That's what I'm calling it. It's really hoppy. Um, it's called Stranger Danger. Um, so that won me first place. And then that carried me on to the uh, People's Choice Award. Everybody enjoyed it out here, really liked it. And apparently the judges really liked it because I went overall with it as well. So Yeah, wow. They, they could have just saved some time with all the official uh, judging and just gone with the people, right? Yeah, I guess so. Uh, <laughs> I really enjoyed it. And, I mean, there's a lot of good beers out here today. And I just feel really fortunate to have the opportunity to share my beers with everybody and everybody for, to enjoy them. So it's a good so, time. So give us a secret to the pale ale. A lot of love, a lot of dry hopping. <laughs> Late hop additions. What what hops did you use? Um, Chinook, all bittering. Um, dry hopped it with some citra and did some uh, late additions, uh, late in the boil at flame out with some citra. And uh, yeah, just loaded up on the dry hopping, man. That's, that's, that's what I like to do. So Awesome. Well, you got to be riding high. Congratulations. I am. I appreciate it. Thank you. Awesome. All right. Well, congratulations to Ben. And I sampled his beers, and they were wonderful, by the way. Of course, uh, you know, all those beer judges and the entire population of the festival, uh, they have good taste. And uh, it's always great to, to taste good homebrew. Uh, and there were, other, there were other beers that, uh, you know, were there that, that didn't get recognized that were good as well. So the competition must have been uh, really uh, competitive. <laughs> All right, I've I've saved a little bit of fun for last. Uh, The festival was held on a dirt lot, and I was talking to Sam's wife, Carrie, who was wearing flip-flops. And because her feet were getting dirty, Carrie complained of having grocery store feet. Now, I'm from Arkansas, you know, which is is pretty far down south, not as far south as as Mississippi, uh, but that was a new one on me. I'd never heard that. So uh, later that evening, I decided to follow up with Carrie about grocery store feet. Carrie, hey, okay Carrie Sorrells, what's wrong with your feet? I do have the grocery store's feet. I do believe I have the grocery store feet. <laughs> I, twice today, from you and Ben Green, the winner of the homebrew competition, both of you said you had grocery store feet. What the heck is grocery store feet? We have the dirt between our toes. <laughs> It's gross. Now, now would, it, would a compliment to the grocery store feet be the granny necklace? It would be the dirt road. The dirt road. There's no granny necklace. There's no granny beads. It's the dirt road. Granny beads. I'm yes. sorry. Yeah, I used to get the granny beads when I was a kid, but I did not get the grocery store feet. Check, it, check your neck right now. You got the granny beads. You've been oh, out for, in the desk with me all day. Oh, for heaven's sake. Well, thank you for that clarification. We'll, I'm sure that will be uh, added to the dictionary soon. Thank you, James Pinzer. <laughs> <laughs> well, a quick Google search, uh, you know, I did a quick Google search when I got home, and there is actually a blog out there called Granny Beads and Grocery Store Feet. So it is, a, I guess it is a real thing. <laughs> Man, I played in the dirt a lot when I was a kid. And, and, you know, growing up in Arkansas, I did get the Granny Beads, which is uh, when dirt collects in that wrinkle in your neck when you're a kid. Uh but I don't remember getting grocery store feet. I'll, I'll have to ask my, my family if, uh, if we had the grocery store feet, too. Do kids today even get dirty? I don't know. If anything, they get Xbox thumbs or something like that. I don't know. 
Uh, thanks again to John and Sam and everybody down in Hattiesburg. I had a blast, and I learned a lot. And uh, if you drop by the Keg and Barrel, be sure that, to, to tell them that, that you heard about it here. And uh, say hi to, to John and Sam if they're around and, and sample some of their nano brews down there. I had some, and it was tasty. Uh, if you have brewing questions, show suggestions, or just want to say howdy, just write to james at basicbrewing.com or fill out the contact form on basicbrewing.com. And please don't forget to tell us where you're from. Be sure to check out our DVDs, Extract Brewing and Partial Mashing, Stepping into All Grain, Low-Tech Lagering and Decoction Mashing, and Introduction to Wine Kits. You can find them all on our site. We've got combo deals to save you a few bucks if you want to buy more than one DVD at a time. And you can check out our Basic Brewing shirts in the store, too. You can see a listing of the fine folks across the country who sell our DVDs on basicbrewing.com. And if there isn't a vendor in your area, you can order them online at our online shop at basicbrewingshop.com. Thanks to everybody who's continued to click on our Amazon.com link and our Amazon.co.uk link. We appreciate the support. Our featured products this week that were purchased through those links are Rick Steves Travel Gear, Clothesline, White, and Heston Blumenthal at Home. Thanks again, everybody. And remember, I can't tell who bought what, so no worries there. Just click on the Amazon.com logo on our site the next time you feel like Amazon shopping, and we appreciate your support. And don't forget that you can also join the American Homebrewers Association or subscribe to Brew Your Own Magazine through the associate links on basicbrewing.com. That's all until next time. Until then, thanks for listening, everybody. I'm James Spencer. Production help for Basic Brewing Radio and our website is provided by Kelly Dunst. Basic Brewing Radio is a production of Active Voicing. We'll talk to you next time, everybody. So long. Take care of those grocery store feet. Thank you.